Hey guys, welcome to Living Tomorrow Today. My name is Julio and if you are watching this channel, there's a good chance that you probably want to start living life on the road the way we are. And one concern you might have is how you stay connected to the internet. So today I want to talk to you about the different resources we use to make sure that we stay connected to the internet and also some of the hardware that helps us uh, maximize what we use to stay connected. One thing you may be wondering is how good is the internet or how good of a setup do we want or do we use? So for me, I wanna keep it as close as possible to what we had in our home when we had a house, a, a sticks and bricks house. For us, the internet has to be able to uh, stream Netflix, um, get on YouTube, and of course, you know, everything else, just surfing the internet, and also getting good cell signal so that we can use our phones inside the RV. So that's kind of where I'm coming to you from. For me, it's not good enough to just be able to check my email. I, I don't want that kind of internet. I want internet, I want real internet. <laughs> Let me start uh, with the RV campground internet. I think for the most part, um, if I had to kind of give it a number, I would say that RV park internet is good enough uh, about 60%, maybe 70% of the time. There may be some lag if you're trying to watch Netflix and stuff like that, but um, it's really not as bad as I thought uh, before we started RVing full time. You know, I saw everybody's YouTube channels that talked about how horrible uh, internet was at the RV parks. I think, I think they've really made some improvements and um, at least, like I said, for us, it hasn't been that bad. And in some places it's been excellent, but I wouldn't count on that as my only source because there have been some places where it's not good, especially if you want to boondock um, somewhere out, you know, far away, then obviously you can't count on that. Um, but there have been some RV parks where it's just not that great. If you just wanted to do nothing, <laughs> um, then I would say that about 50 to 60% of the time, the RV park internet will work for you to surf the internet and most of the time so that you can maybe stream some video on the TV or something like that. Okay, so here's an issue that I don't have any scientific proof of, but based on my own experience, I think it does have an effect on the signal that we get inside the RV. Our RV is made out of aluminum and I do think that that does have an effect on the signal that you're gonna get inside the RV when it comes to either the Wi-Fi from the park or even the cell reception that you get uh, inside the RV. I, I think, honestly, if I thought about that when we were looking for an RV, I would not have bought aluminum. Uh, it doesn't completely stop the uh, signal that you're gonna receive, but I think it does hinder it a little bit. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that the, the your, I believe, uh, that the aluminum outside the RV does have a minor effect on the quality of service you get inside the RV. So that said, our primary source of internet, of good internet, is from our Verizon Jetpack uh, that does have unlimited data, but unfortunately the unlimited data plan that we have is no longer available. Um, you still can get the Jetpack and you can use whatever services Verizon offers nowadays, but as far as the unlimited plan that we have that is not throttled but is network managed, um, you can't get that anymore. We use this about 80 to 90% of the time for our internet needs in the RV. Now, this does use a cell signal. This has a phone number and everything. It's, it's like having a cell phone that doesn't do anything other than receive data. Going back to the aluminum framing of the RV, I think that does have an effect on how good of a signal this is going to put out. And for a while, I wasn't that happy that I had bought this because I wasn't getting a very good signal. However, there is hardware that you can use to maximize uh, the signal that is received by the Jetpack and that has made a world of difference and I'll get into the hardware in just a minute. So after the Jetpack, uh, our backup is sometimes our phone. Now this is Verizon and this is AT&T. Now the difference here is that of course the data that comes with your phone is going to be limited by whatever plan you have 
We do use this if for whatever reason the, the jetpack isn't working or isn't getting a good signal, but we wouldn't watch, you know, we wouldn't binge watch sh shows on Netflix because it's gonna burn up all the data. Uh, but if we need to get online um, for, you know, just regular type stuff, uh, searching the internet, we can use this as a backup. Okay, so let me recap before I get into the hardware. Uh, our primary source is the Verizon Jetpack, and I believe this is the 8800L with the unlimited plan that unfortunately you cannot get anymore. Then we normally fall back on our cell phone if we need to. Uh, and then we also have the park Wi-Fi, which hasn't been as bad as I thought. The connection is not always the best, so let me show you the hardware that we use. So this uh, right here, as you can, I don't know if you can see that, these wires right here are going to the antenna that is right there. And I actually have it on the screen so I can show you. So let me show you that real quick. So this antenna is the Netgear 600450 MIMO antenna. And the great thing about this antenna is that it's only 27, uh, 2750. So uh, if you have a jet pack or anything that takes the little prongs that fit to the antenna, I would strongly suggest getting this antenna. So what the MIMO is, is that that stands for multiple in, multiple out. And the quick version of that is that it takes multiple signals from different cell towers, puts them together, and it gives you the strongest signal possible as opposed to just connecting to one tower. Now, just because this technology has it doesn't mean that the antenna you use is also gonna have it. And that's what's great about this Netgear MIMO antenna. So that's something really important if you really wanna get the best signal out of your jetpack. Another piece of hardware we use is the WeBoost Connect RV65, which as you can see is this really tall mast that has an antenna at the top and it actually works pretty well. Now, one thing to note about signal boosters is that they do not create a signal where there is no signal. So you have to have even a little bit of weak signal so that it can boost that signal and allow you to, at a minimum, make phone calls from your phone. And if you're lucky, if there's a strong enough signal, it'll allow you to use the data on your phone and then you can try to use it as a hotspot to connect your laptop and maybe even your TV. So that is the second piece of technology we use. Now that is an expensive one. As I said, the MIMO antenna that we bought for the hotspot, 27 bucks, 28 bucks. But the WeBoost was $650. Is it worth it? Uh... I'm on the fence on that. Uh, I'm glad we got it because it does allow us to use our phone when we don't have a strong signal. However, there are some options that are a little cheaper by WeBoost that are maybe a hundred bucks less that we could also use and may have worked as well. I, I'm not sure, I don't have them. One thing about the antenna is that you cannot leave it mounted uh, to the RV. So every time we move, I have to take it down and then set it back up once we get to our camp. It's not a difficult process. However, it is just one more thing that I have to do. It would be nice to just have a permanently mounted antenna that I had on top of the RV. That way I don't have to worry about it anymore. But the antenna is stronger. That's what the 65 stands for. It is the strongest signal that you can have to boost a cell signal. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, we do use it and I'll show you right now how well it works. Hey, Nicole. Can you come out here and help me? Right, so if you guys can see right there is my signal strength, uh, somewhere between one and two bars. Nicole's gonna go ahead and connect the Wii Boost. Go ahead. And hopefully we'll get a stronger signal in just a few seconds. It takes about 10 seconds or so to go through this, through it. Oh, look, I can already tell. So you can see right away that we got a much stronger signal. We got full bars now. I do like that we have it. It does work. Um, it's just up to you if you want to make that expense. Having that strong signal for us is important. It, uh, it is worth the cost. Because this is the lifestyle that we live now on the road, having the connectivity is really important to us. Um, the kids get online all the time. That's how they do their homeschooling. That's how I do my uh, programming work. And that's also how we entertain ourselves when we're gonna use Netflix or you know just anything else on the internet. For us, anything that I can do 
or install to give us better signal uh, is usually worth it. Now, let me show you one other service that I have not used, but I did consider. Um, it is expensive, but if it works the way it says, you know, then it may be worth it to you. So let's go back to the computer and I'll show you what it is. All right, guys, so this is unlimitedville.com, as you can see right there. I am not sponsored by them. I don't, I don't, really, I don't even use this service. I don't get anything from this company, but I did find them and what they advertise looks really good. I found some reviews online and people say it works pretty well. So basically this is, this is sort of like having the jetpack that I have. Essentially what you are doing is that you are uh, renting an old data plan that is no longer sold and instead they let you rent it from them for a monthly fee and you have unlimited data to use. And they have plans with all the major carriers. Now, as you can see on the website, it says no data limits, no throttling, no contracts, no credit checks. So it seems like a pretty easy thing to get if it actually does what they say they do. So as you can see, uh, they have their different plans. The colors correspond with the different carriers uh, with uh, the blue plan and the red plan being the two most expensive ones. I don't really have any further information other than what they talk about on their website and some of the some of the research I've done online and reviews. So if this is something you would want to try, I mean, um, it sounds like it'd be awesome, but I don't know if it's worth 250 or 200 bucks a month. Honestly, if I had not gotten that antenna right there for the MiFi, I was at the point where I was pretty much ready to give this a shot anyways and see if it worked. Um, but uh, that little antenna right there has really made a huge difference for us. That is pretty much how we get connected online. We have the Verizon Jetpack, we have our cell phones, uh, each on different plans, AT&T and Verizon. We also use the Park Wi-Fi, which has not been as bad as I thought. I wouldn't count on it for anything serious. Like I wouldn't count on just having the Park Wi-Fi so that for work or the kids school but um, when it's working it works pretty well and you know I use that so that I don't use any other data from anything else and then uh, hardware like I said that uh, Mimo antenna and then the uh, WeBoost antenna as well. One thing you may be wondering is why this antenna works better for the MiFi instead of the one that I have and that's because of the MIMO technology. This little antenna that was only 30 bucks has MIMO technology in it, multiple in, multiple out. The WeBoost does not have that technology, so it is not it is not maximizing what is inside this to give me the, the best signal. Uh, that antenna out there is going to connect to one tower and however good that tower is, that's that's how it's gonna work. Um, it is a directional antenna, so you do have to point it toward the best signal that you can find. But uh, once you do find it, it is pretty good. And there is an app, I think it's called Open Signal, that you can use to find where the best tower is. You point it towards it and um, you know, you get the signal you get. So uh, I hope this was useful for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you have any ideas so that we can get better in it as well, also leave that in the comments. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you found anything useful. And we will see you at the next video. Bye.